influencers where our, our we were talking about the AI influencer that could pop up. And is this a real concern right now? Because some of them are already burning out. They're hanging up there. <laughs> they're hanging up their their uh, colored lights. <laughs> they're cha- they're putting away the hot tub and everything. What's going on in the influencer space? Shout out to the hot tub Twitch channel. I love it. I love it. I don't know, Mr. Benjamin, what do you think? I would say I'm, my, I, I'm relatively new. I was a YouTube university guy for years, but it was really during the pandemic that kind of opened my eyes of what YouTube could really be about. And then my kids watching their growth on getting tied into the influencer market. And so now hearing these influencers have been doing it for so long and really probably a lot of them, probably I, my guess, they had explosive growth during the pandemic. Now we're four years since then, they're probably burnt out. They've been doing this for probably eight, nine, 10 years. Yeah. And so a lot of them are realizing, hmm, is this a sustainable path, right? To what I want to do long-term. And some are realizing maybe it's not for them. And you have influencers like uh, Heinz, who is, I, I didn't know this guy before, but I started looking at some of his YouTubes and really dig his vibe, more calming, relaxing vibe, not that Mr. Beast in your face style. We're going to blow up a million boots. And maybe one could be yours. No, nah, Heinz ain't doing all that. Heinz is more like, to, to contrast with that, hey, we are on a boat, and the boat is good. I really appreciate that everyone's here on the boat. Just relax with the boat. And if it blows up, it's okay. You won't get hurt. Just a little wet. We're here with Heinz. Hey, make sure you join my community. Hindsight. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> that guy's chill, man. I love it. And that's the way he has to be. He should be because it's you zag when everyone zigs, right? Or you zig when everyone zags. And so Mr. Beast is Mr. Beast, right? And everybody's trying to follow that style to get more and more attention, but it's almost becomes diminishing returns. I think the the more calmer, relaxing style could work, but just like anything that could get boring too. So I don't know. And then now what I'm seeing too, is we're seeing a lot of these influence, we're seeing celebrity influencers get in the mix, right? So obviously we have the podcasters, we had First, it was just regular folks, right? The uh, Call Me Your Daddy podcasters, right? They got like $60 million. Joe Rogan, he was pseudo known, famous before he got into the podcasting world. <laughs> but now you are seeing like actors like Jason Bateman. What's the, what's their site? What's it called? I can't remember the name of their podcast, but it was Jason Bateman, Arnett, and Sean Hayes. They create their own podcast during a pandemic and so- sold it for $60 million. So I say that to say that the influencer market, you have these very charismatic stars and celebrities anyway, starting to create their own podcast channels, right? Like the Shade Club or Stephen A. Smith from sports. And they're becoming more popular. So it's like these influencers, like, wait a minute. Yeah, I built an audience for 10 years. I have some charisma, but now you're competing against the highest levels of charisma. People who've been on a platform television that has nothing but gatekeepers making sure that the content you have is at the highest quality. And now they're entering this space. And then now you have AI coming in. We just talked about, man, how did these, I see why these influencers, man, are, 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 are looking at the, themselves. Is this something I really want to do for another 10 years? Yeah, that's a good point. And, and this was, this burnout was happening even before the, the issues that you said, it's wow. They've been running all these videos and tight schedules and, they were all looking to be like that Mr. Beast level, but you only had a few. It's like what, Mr. Beast, PewDiePie, like the big top guns of the influencer space. And after that, somebody like CoffeeZilla even, that's got to be taxing on him. Because mm-hmm. he's not at that higher level, but he's well known. But him, I'll even throw beyond the trailer up in there. Like Grace will keep mm-hmm. doing her thing, but... That's a hard sell, man. You got to work at that. And she lives in New York too with that rent. <laughs> the rent too damn high. Yeah, she's out. She she does it like every day. She has a live every day and she does reaction. But you can tell she's narrowed her focus. This is mostly reaction videos and uh, review, spoiler reviews. And that's pretty much it. But that's what I think it's a labor of love for her because I went through her content, Mr. Benjamin. She's been around for like almost 17 years. Like when she was out in these streets, man, talking to folks. I don't think she'd get in the streets anymore. <laughs> yeah. And when they put the hammer down on reactions and start really pulling in the reins tight on some of that copyright, because they've you been doing so? this, they've been doing this slowly. But at some point, they're just going to be like, all right. We've said fair use and everybody's just like using our stuff for whatever. 
we're about to put the clamps on that and mm. Good okay. game. I, I didn't see that coming, but yeah. So yeah, influence the life, Mr. Benjamin. Like I said, I, I enjoy it because it, as a businessman, I'm more into the cheapness of distribution, right? You'd be able to distribute your channel and create your community. And there's always opportunities for that. And so super excited about that. But Mr. Benjamin, what's funny, I I think I sent this to you, is a lot of these influencers are looking for a way out and they're trying to go back to old former television, the network sitcom. Can you believe oh. that? Oh, tell me how this, tell me how this finishes up. So have you watched uh, Abbott Elementary at all? No, I I only know the little short that, oh, he got money. I, I only know that, <laughs> but that was before the show. Yeah. Quinta, Brun Quinta uh, Brunson. She was a, a viral sensation on the internet, right? Mm -hmm. Way back in and she was on, what's it? Buzz, Buzzfeed for years doing those little, little silly skits with her and her crew. Funny stuff, right? And then um, she got into television. People liked what she was writing and doing. So I think the first thing she did was the Black Lady Sketch Show. And that's when they saw her her, her chops when it came to television. I got to look that up. What's that? <laughs> that just sounds funny. Black Lady Sketch Show. Wow. You you, you never knew about that, Mr. Benjamin? Nope. Off my radar. Oh, wow. Wait, we, I, I'm surprised we never talked about that. It was a funny show, man. I knew it wasn't going to last too long. But it was, it was a moment in time where dreams were possible and you can have a specific... <laughs> demographic comedy show skit show called the black lady sketch show but anyway uh quinta showed up on that and then she got a chance to pitch her sitcom about elementary um school uh teacher and this what's really happening it's like a mockumentary style office style kind of comedy funny but also heartwarming because it gives you a sense of what teachers are dealing with now but i say all that to say yeah it's, it's a good show and it's a network show so and she won i think she was the first you know comedy actress to win from like network, basically old school ABC, NBC, CBS show for 10 years has always been like streaming or has been HBO or somebody like that's been winning. So anyway, what she's doing now is she's starting to bring a lot of these viral sensations from the internet onto network television, which is the old, you know, by standards of what we watch on television, you're talking about 22 episodes in a, a season, 32 minutes, you got commercials. All that, man. It's not streaming. It's not one off. It's not this. And she's bringing all these viral folks into the show to get broader audiences. So it's old. Yeah, it's old. Here's an old pickup truck. And let's get the Kardashians in here. Let's get this, the shiny, fancy people to see if we can make this a little bit more energetic. So we'll see. It's almost like it's become a finishing school for huh. uh, these influencers. Has, has your boy Jordan the Stallion been on there? Jordan Howlett? Not yet, but he's getting big time too. We're going to talk a little bit about him. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I've seen this guy before. I He shows up in my feed a lot, but he's always got the phone. He's So I was out at the mall, and I don't know if you know this about what malls. But come here, let me talk to you for a second. Yes, come closer. That guy. It's, it's, it seems like an extremely simple premise where he just, it, it's, it's very formulaic, but he does paint within the boundaries and does a lot of good creative stuff in there. But yeah, why is this guy good? I, I hadn't actually thought about it. I hadn't thought about it until you actually typed it out. I was like, yeah, why is he good? But he's got an appeal, man. What, what do you see in him? Cause you brought him up. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, I, I put my reasons why, right? Like you said, it's a very simple premise, not a lot of bells and whistles, but within that he's very expert. He knows exactly what he's talking about. He has a funny style of deliver deliverance, and he has a simple value equation every time he, he, he speaks to you. And the value is usually you know, around sharing secret rep recipes that you can make at home. And But he tells a, a funny, endearing story to why how he came about figuring out this recipe or why he's delivering the recipe. Uh, he told one story about how someone was uh, pissing him off at one, what, I think it was Popeye's or somebody. And they laughed at him. He said, oh, it's not like you're the guy that shares these secret recipes and you show him in this <laughs> bucket of chicken is this. It was just, and so it's just, he just very well in how he delivers his content that's entertaining, but also informative. And I think that's really the best format to do. You have to, the style is his own style, unique style, but in there, the formula is about entertainment and information. It's a good mix. It, yeah, it's funny. And it's... I'm going to parallel this to 
early sitcoms because there's a certain vibe of reality to it. Like we know this is a real guy talking and like sitcoms obviously weren't real, but when we were talking about good times last week and even Seinfeld, it's these kind of things that like, yes, we know this is set up, but it just has this veneer of being real, relatable. Mm. It's not trying to fake you out and say, Hey, we're real when we're really fake. But it's just, you know, just understand we, we, this is coming from a quote unquote real space. And yeah, he actually does go out and get the recipes. He's always been into food. I watched a little documentary and him and his friends had something like the secret food club or something like that. I forgot what it's called, mm. but and he's very disciplined. You saw that story about how he tried to be a MLB baseball player starting at 16 yeah. and, and his story and his journey for that shows you that he'll put the work in and I know as a creative we talked about this before I think I asked you about this I think that you probably your most creative the more constraints you have and so the more I think he put himself in such a constraint of what he'll deliver that he became so good at delivering that and that's what probably makes it stand out and I think when you talk about sitcoms they have they can only be on for 25 minutes or because they have commercials and within that they have act breaks so they know when they're going to have something that's interesting to make you want to come back so now the writer is, okay, I have to write toward a goal. Even and within that, I can do whatever I want, but it yeah. better be interesting at, this, yeah. at the eight minute mark or the people going to throw it in the trash. And then now you have other creatives looking at your eight minutes to determine if that's great or not. And now you're battling to find out what's the best ideas. And that what makes in constraint comes creative mastery. Maybe I'll throw that out there. I like that. Damn it. That was, that quote was far better than anything I had. <laughs> I was like, let me say something provocative about creativity. And like, you got me. <laughs> Good one. But no, there's a lot to, there's a lot to be said for that. And then it's, it's like, they always say, you can't really break the rules until you really know them. So that's one of the things I see with a lot of people out here when they're creating, they have all these tools and they're just creating random stuff, but then somebody finds a format that works and then it becomes a discussion between the creator and the audience where the audience is expecting certain things to happen on certain beats. They're expecting certain things to happen at certain times. They're expecting certain figures. Like we were talking about the, the story brand earlier, they're expecting a guide to show up. They're expecting a challenge to show up. And this is the way we tell stories. It becomes a shorthand, um, a meme, a, a series of memes, basically ideas. And yeah, see, see, whatever I was putting coming up with doesn't touch this in constraint. There's creative mastery. So I'm just going to stop right there. <laughs> I'm not constraining myself here. I love it. <laughs> also, Kai Sanat, we didn't talk about this last week, but he made big news. He becomes Nike's first streamer signed to the brand. So authentic athletic apparel has signed Kai Sanat. One of the bigger streamers out there gets paid. Like I think at one point he was making 400,000 a month from, from Twitch and his other outlets. Yeah. Nike signed him to wear tank tops and flip flops, not being very athletic, but kid is fit. So it works out. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I don't have too much on this one, but you've been following this guy's career for a while, but kudos to him, man. He was at the NBA all-star weekend. He was actually in the dunk contest, helping out one of the dunkers. So. Kudos, probably put it on Twitch while he was getting dunked on. Influencers, influencers going to influence. I saw this one Hollywood Stone just did a profile of what's that one guy? You've seen him before. He's in all those commercials now. He's got like blonde hair. He's like an influencer, a uh, comedian influencer. Dang, I can't remember his name right now. Will come to me later. But yeah, this is this is what we see happening. More and more influencers going to get bigger and bigger brand deals. Mr. Beast will probably be a billionaire probably in the next five years, maybe three. That's why all the kids want to be influencers now, Mr. Benja. Until, I, I, you know what? I do feel like this influencer market is like almost, it's like anything. It's going to change because with AI, I don't know being an influencer is going to be as much fun as it is now. <laughs> I guess mm -hmm. it's, I, I have a prediction that, yeah, if you didn't get in being an influencer, like a super big influencer now and build that community and that audience, it, it might be a wrap to go down that route because AI might just take that over for us. But that's just my two cents on it. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere between AI and the big corporations like 
ByteDance trying to seal all your data and just making everything silly. Yeah, that happened, by the way. Everybody found out that CapCut, the popular app that everybody was using, was stealing all their data. Just well, Not just, but very similarly to the other series of apps they have, including TikTok. So interesting stuff over there. But I don't know. That's all I got on influencers. They 